Hi, it's Juliet. Welcome to my studio. So I'm just going to hang the cast on comb. I have the kind that's got the little metal rings and you put one on every other needle the whole way around the cylinder. So I'll come back in a minute when this is hung and ready. Okay, and I'm going to hang a weight on it and I'm going to grab a ball of waste yarn little balls of yarn and I can reuse them multiple times. So I have these little weights with these little glass socks that I use. I'm gonna put that here. It just provides a little weight and it hangs down on the inside. All right, now I'm gonna stop. I'll just move that down a little bit longer. And hang these other ones and it's hanging on every other one so that one came from there so it'd be here okay <clears throat> and i will just finish my cast on all right i'm on here to do one more round Okay, and I'm gonna stop right here. This is my three o'clock mark on the right here. And I'm gonna take this yarn out of the feeder and just tuck it down in the middle, about at the end anyway. Get that out of the way. I can reuse that little weight and hang it on that tail. It doesn't need it not to be on the other one. Okay, so now I'm gonna put on one row of a ravel cord. And this is kind of a braided nylon cord, which is easy to take out of the machine. So I'm just feed this up through here. And I don't bother to put it through my feeder. I'm gonna hold it, so I'm gonna take another little sake weight, hang that to hold the end down. And I'm gonna go from three o'clock um, to nine o'clock. And once my nine o'clock needle knits, I'm gonna just pause. I'm gonna take my hook and pull out a length here, about an inch and a half or so. And I'm gonna take another one of my little sake hooks and hang that down in the middle. We're gonna be pulling this out e uh, later when we hang the toe, so it makes it a little bit easier to get the ravel cord out. So I'm gonna continue around to three o'clock and then I'm gonna stop. As soon as that three o'clock latch closes, I'm gonna pull the rest of my ravel cord out, drop that down into the center, and get another one of my little sake dudes and hang that into the center. So now I'm ready to switch over to my project yarn. Cut. Okay, so my project learn yarn is loaded so I'm going to put another one of these little clips on and I'm going to put the yarn in the feeder. I do have my heel spring turned on at this point and just let that drop in there and since we're doing toe up socks I'm only going to knit on the back half of the needle from three o'clock through midnight to nine o'clock so I'm going to do the toe on the back half. This front half will not be knit so I'm going to knit a little bit and then I'm gonna pause, and this entire front half, I'm gonna lift all the needles up so they're in the non-working position or the hold position. I'm just lifting them all up. 
Okay, so I'm gonna finish this first row in the back and I'm gonna pause. And now what I wanna do is um, I wanna wrap on this side. So I'm gonna wrap it around that first hook. Make sure all these latches are pushed down so that it doesn't snag on that little gap in the uh, yarn feeder. All right, at this point, I've got my heel spring on, but I do not have um, the lycra on. I'm gonna do this one row here. And I'm gonna wrap this side. And at this point, I'm gonna add my lycra. So I have the lycra fed down through here. I'm just holding it at the end of it here in the center. And I'm using a cobweb lycra. So I wrap that first needle. So now I'm going to knit back and I'm watching um, these to make sure they knit off. At some point, I'm gonna need to add some weight. You can see that guy was kind of pulling up a little bit. So there's not quite enough weight in the middle. Sometimes you can grab this in the center here and kind of pinch it together, and that will help kind of pull those stitches off. It'll put a little bit of tension in it, so you can get away with another row or two before adding the, the, the toe weights. So the first two rows I wrap, the second two rows I'm gonna lift. So I got a little bit more. So I'm gonna lift this into hold and we'll make an auto wrap. And then I'm gonna go down, back, get to this side, and lift, and then head back. And what these first six rows are doing, they're adding a little bit extra so you can stretch the toe across the cylinder. Now I'm gonna wrap. I do have the Lycra on here and the heel spring turned on. So make sure that knits off. I'm gonna kind of squeeze it in the center. And once I get through these first six rows, then I'm gonna add my weights. Okay, I'm gonna reopen my latches there. Okay, so now I'm gonna get my weights out and add them. And I'm gonna add one, I'm gonna go over about three inches, uh, three stitches and then go down just above my cast on or my ravel cord here. And I'm gonna go over three and then put the edge of it right over there. So let me get those ready to hang those. And I use these clips that are from one of my flatbed knitting machines. And these weights, which are from my flatbed knitting machine. I had them, they're handy. So you can see the right edge of this, I'm gonna put just down here in the bottom, just a few stitches in. And I will do the same on the other side with a second weight. So I'm, I'm shaping the toe and I'm doing the decreases. I'm gonna decrease it down to where I've got these tan markers on my machine and that will leave 12 stitches in the center. So this one I'm gonna raise. I'm gonna raise on the side of the yarn carrier. That'll create an auto wrap. Go around. Raise this guy, bring it back, and it's pretty typical toe shaping. So we're gonna continue until we have 12 stitches left. Oops, so that one didn't quite knit off. So if that happens, you can kind of pull the um, thing out, and grab the part of it that didn't knit off lift it up and over the stitch to the inside. Let's see, to properly form that stitch. Okay, if that starts happening, that's a sign that you need to move your weight up. So I'll typically grab this, kind of hold it out of the way. I'll move it up and over a few needles closer to the center, up and over a few needles. Okay, so this one hasn't been raised yet. And you can tell it hasn't been raised because this stitch is coming off on the outside here. So once we raise it, you'll see that it's going behind here. And so it'll create that auto wrap. Raise this side. Raise this side. Raise this side. Something weird happened here. Let me see what happened. It wrapped caught half of the stitch. So some of that those stitches weren't caught. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull up the stitch from one row down, put that on the needle, 
And see how that split that? So I'm going to take that off. Now I'm going to just basically manually knit it like I did that other stitch. So if you pull it forward a bit, you can get a bit of gap. You can kind of go in with the tool behind it. And uh, pull this out again. Hopefully my fingers aren't totally in the way. You can see what I'm doing. So I've grabbed that. I'm going to pull it out and up and over and just basically I'm manually stitching it. If you pull that up and then you, you lean it out a little bit, it'll kind of pull that stitch and even out the tension. So it's comparable to the ones on the other on either side of it. Okay, I already lifted this guy. So I'm on my way back. That one didn't knit. So I'm going to have to pull my um, weights up again. That one has to come up anyway, so I'll pull it out and move this weight up and towards the center a bit more. Up and towards the center a bit more. Okay, go back. When it's heading back, I sometimes lift up on it manually here um, to help make sure it, it catches. Sometimes the heel spring doesn't quite pull it up all the way. It's easier to just check it. Okay, a few more to go. So the next part of this is to do the increases. So it's the other side of the toe. So when I get down to the last part, and that one didn't quite knit off properly, so I'll have to fix that one. in here, grab it from behind, pull it out, lift it over. Okay. Lift that one up. Okay, so I am, this one didn't knit either. Probably should have moved my weights one more time, but we're at the last stitch, so we won't bother. Okay, so now I'm to the point where I need to start adding needles back into the work. So what I do is I lift up one on the needle side, on the carriage side, on the yarn side, and then I put down two on the other. So I'll push these down, and I want to push them down just so the latches just start to raise a little bit. Let me pull this one up all the way. And then we'll go back. Make sure it all knits off. So now, as we're already adding more stitches, we probably don't need to be monkeying with the weights anymore, which is nice. So I'm going to lift one up on this side and two down on the other. And do one up, two down. One up, two down. One up. Let's see that one went down a bit. Two down. Up two down. Oops, I accidentally pushed three. Up two down. Sometimes I'll put my hands on the un underside to help with the weights. Make sure things are knitting off okay. One up, two down.
two down. All right, I'm almost to the three o'clock and nine o'clock. The next step after I hang this is I'm gonna um, put my ribber on and I wanna make sure it's going in this direction. So I'm gonna go to this side here and then I'm gonna go to the next side and then I'm gonna stop part way so that I can get my, my uh, hang my toe and then work on the ribber. So that I, did, that I did the one up, I gotta do the two down. And this side I'm gonna do one up and two down and then I'm gonna stop part way. Okay, so now at this point, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lower all of these needles on the side of the machine closest to me. And what we're gonna do is, is hang the toe. So I'll pause here for just a second. All right, so I took all the weights off. And at this point, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna find the ends where the ravel cord is and take these and bring them to the outside. But I wanna bring it to the outside right over where my blue mark is at three o'clock. And I just rehang my weight on the outside here just, just to hold it. I'm gonna do the same with this double guy here. And he's gonna go at the nine o'clock mark. I'm gonna hang him outside. There's the beginning of this other ravel cord end. This one here was the, my sock beginning. I'm gonna just stick that out of the way for now, put its cord away. This one here I'm gonna bring out through at three o'clock. Here's another little weight, which was on my um, waist yarn, my purple lavender cast on. Okay, so there's no weights. I've got the ravel cord sticking out. This was the beginning of my yarn tail. We're gonna be taking care of that. And now I've got this here and you can see I've got this light green ravel cord here and the lavender is my waist yarn. And then this mint color variegated is my project yarn. So the idea here is to pick up these loops of the project yarn, not the, wa not the ravel cord and not the waist yarn, the, the project yarn and get it onto these stitches. We're gonna start at this edge and work in a bit, at this edge and work in a bit, and we're gonna finish in the center. So the hardest part is to find where it starts. So you have this, this ravel cord that's going to the edge here. And this is your project yarn here. So this one here is what your project yarn is attached to. So we don't want to use that loop. We want to go over to the next loop, which is this guy right here. So this is my project yarn right here. And we're going to put it on this stitch not the one next to the three o'clock, because this has got that little wrap from the beginning. We're gonna to go to the next one over. That's gonna give us one extra stitch, but we'll, dub we'll double it up. So here's the ravel cord and here's the next stitch. And we're gonna hang it on here. Ravel cord and my project stitch. And if I pull this over with my hand, as opposed to grabbing this and pulling it, if I grab this and pull it, it's gonna tighten up all the stitches and make it hard to find. But if I pull and stretch the whole toe of the sock over, I can very easily get these. And what I usually do is I just put on this first portion of my project yarn and I stop right where my stitch markers are here. So I do that first side there and I'm gonna go to the other side. And it's the same deal. So we have this one here, we've got the ravel cord and you see in between the two bumps of ravel cord is where my project yarn is. So the, these very first stitches can be a little tricky, but you're going down in between these two ravel cords and you're grabbing that, and that's the stitch there. But we're not gonna go on here because it's already got project yarn from my initial wrap. We're gonna go the next one over and put that on there. And then we're gonna get the next one, and put it on it, and the next project, and we're gonna work our way over. And you can see I'm, I'm putting tension on the toe with my hand and I'm not totally pulling. I mean, you have to pull a little bit to get those stitches to stretch. It is a little bit of a stretch. I'm at the green. Now, whenever I get to this point here, because of the way you do the one ups and two downs, sometimes you get off by one, you can have a one or fewer um, stitches. So what I usually do is I count the stitches and count my needles and see where if I need to double up one or two. So I've got 
1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 stitches. And I've got 12 needles. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So that means one of these is going to have two stitches. So usually if I have one, I'll put it somewhere near the middle. If I have two, I'll put, you know, one on this near this green guy here and one near this green guy there. So I'll put them near the middle so I can keep going my way over here. So that was a project yarn. This one here is project yarn down in between those two ravel cords. Right there. And then we've got this one more, one last guy here. He's gonna just double up on that one there. So I'm gonna push these down. So now the next point, we still have this ravel cord and I wanna get this off and get rid of my bonnet so there's less bulk on here. And we're gonna hang, um, I've got a, a toe up weight, special weight that I use from uh, David Lord that I like. So I'm going to take these little weights off of the ravel cord. I'll leave this one on this side for now. And you can see on the stitches that there's um, two pieces of ravel cord. One was, you know, what was on the other side, and then we just brought it over. So we have two pieces of ravel cord in this area. So we want to get rid of this ravel cord bulk. So if you find the ravel cord down there, just going in behind and I'm pulling on it. Now if I, I'm pulling below, down below with my hand and it kind of loosens up the ravel cord and you can kind of get your tool in there, get at it and pull that out. So you can do it, you know, one stitch at a time or sometimes you can do it every other one. So we're getting this part of the ravel cord out and then there's the other part of the ravel cord that's still in there we have to work on in a minute too. You don't have to get this out of the way, but I find it creates less bulk and you can get your weights hanging down easier and they they are less in the way. So it's worth the effort to me to do this now with the ravel cord. But, you know, it depends on how finicky your machine is. Mine's an old 1917 Gearheart and it can be a little persnickety. All right. And <clears throat> you can see the ravel cord is kind of up on top. It's a shinier thing, so we'll start pulling it out here. And there it is in between those two. So we pull it out there. And again, if you pull down from below on the cast on bonnet and then release it, it'll like tension it and then loosen it up and it's a little bit easier to get out. So the cast on bonnet came off and this is waste yarn and I can uh, just pull this out and wind it up and reuse it a few more times. I'll just move that out of the way for now. Okay, so the next part is to hang my toe up weight. Now these two stitches or three stitches over near the three o'clock and the nine o'clock, they can be um, a pain because they, they tend to close the latches. So I usually lift them up a bit higher just to make sure that when they're knitting, the latches don't drop those stitches. Okay, so this is the weight, the shamboard weight here. And it comes with these two pieces. It's got this little wire thing in it. It takes a fair amount of tension to close it. And it has this thing which is gonna sit on top. And we're gonna lift the weight up from the bottom. We're gonna squeeze this and put it through and it's gonna grab on this. And then we're gonna hang our regular weights down here. So I'm gonna reach up from the underside and place my forks on here. And if you look at this from the top, you can see that this is like a little bit off center. So when I hang this, I wanna hang in the center. So I'm gonna just go like a row or two towards me as opposed to up that way. And, and the reason we have that is those extra rows when we cast on, those ended up being a little bit more here so when you have the foot, um, this, this back side will be the top. It has a little bit extra here, and it kind of pulls that seamer uh, around a little bit more towards the way this goes up on the top side. But then it's less to be um, underneath your toe, so it's actually more comfy that way. So I'm going to go up from the underside, and I'm going to squeeze this, and I want to kind of poke through 
in, in about two spots right around right around here bring that up and I'm going to take my weight and you see this was the my beginning yarn I'm going to hang this across here from side to side and I'm going to put this on here and I'm going to let these spring out and it'll only spring out to the width of that little opening and this will be in here and I want to see it through that middle because that's going to be important in a minute now I'm going to just hang my weight on it from below okay so this little end here I'm going to take this and I'm going to e-wrap it around a needle so it's going to just do the letter e around it and it comes back across here and I'm going to do that for my next row or two and the reason I want to have it here is sometimes this end comes in but you can still grab it through here and put a bit of tension on it and that will make sure that it knits off properly okay so I'm now at the point where I've got my full toe hung I've got um, a couple of stitches around my three o'clock and my nine o'clock pulled up I'm checking very carefully to make sure all my latches are open so I don't want to drop any stitches. There's a lot of tension on this. So if you drop something, it's going to run. And yeah, don't want that. Okay, so I'm going to knit a row. And my next step, sometimes you have to kind of push this down by hand just to get it to knit off for this first row because there's a lot of tension on this. Um, I'm going to do one full row and then I'm going to do partial row and I'm going to stop at the point where I can hang my ribber because the next step is to do a three by one rib on the back side, which is the top of the foot. So I'm gonna come around and on, on my gear heart here, I'm just pushing this down to make sure the stitches are knitting off properly. When this gets just a little bit further, right about there, that's where I'm gonna stop. And now I'm gonna install my ribber. <laughs> 